of Ireland and her capital city is etched on the coastline. And as you approach the city of Dublin, you'll pass many ancient fortifications and picturesque old harbours, which were once thriving ports in their own right. Along that coast, now called the Ratatouille Coast, there are many haute cuisine restaurants sprung up. But we're now on the main artery, which goes right to the heart of the city of Dublin. This is the River Liffey. Beside me, the Guinness boats about to embark on their sacred mission, carrying the blessed fluid across the world. Over there, Gandon's famous Custom House, one of the finest buildings in Europe. But along this river, a thousand years ago, sailed the Norsemen in their longboats. Shields glistening in the sun, dragon heads proud, they established an encampment upriver at Wood Quay. With great forethought, because a few hundred years later, Guinnesses were going to build a brewery close by. This is part of the Guinness Museum. It's a place where the tourists can find out a little bit about Guinness and indeed can sample and try to acquire a taste for this bitter black brew. This is actually the hop store of the original Guinness Brewery because it was here in 1759 that clever young Arthur Guinness arrived to take over a disused brewery and start cooking up this stuff. And by the outbreak of World War I, this brewery was the biggest in the world. To this day, no spot on the face of the earth produces more stout. As I say, the tourists can see this, but we're going to take a hop behind the scenes to see how modern technology is controlling the methods that young Arthur used in 1759. The initial process or first fermentation is very much like a giant home brew kit. It's after that that high tech takes over. But where would you find a computer with a a well-developed palate and perhaps a spot of liver trouble. If you want to know the secret of brewing Guinness, take a quick note of this. Shay Doyle, you'll forgive me for interrupting uh, your game of Space Invaders there, but I'm, I'm looking at this huge map on the wall here. It, it, it looks like the London Underground gone mad. What, in, what is it? This represents all the process that the beer would go through uh, after initial fermentation. Is this, uh, this kind of plant now par for the course all around the world? No, this is probably the most modern fermentation plant in the world at the present time. But tell me, with all these uh, innovations, is the pint that we're getting now as a result of all this modernization, is that a different pint um, to the one that we got, let's say, 20 years ago? No, no, the pint remains the same. The uh, object of the exercise is to produce a pint which will be precisely the same as the pint we've always enjoyed. Listen, there's one thing the computer can't do. The computer can't drink a pint. That's true, so we all have to drink a little more. <laughs>